Somewhere in the world, in an office somewhere, is a worker with their head in their hands because their boss won't see a change in process as a good thing. Somewhere in a hospital, there is a nurse who's getting really frustrated because the senior administrators won't change a process that will improve patient care and they keep on doing the same old, same old thing. Somewhere, there's somebody on a, mo on a, a phone call, on a support call that's lasted for an hour and they've got whole music going and they've got their bill in their hand from their holiday where they've got tons of phone data they didn't think they'd use, but no one will talk to them about how to fix that. Somewhere around the world, or somewhere, there is a new startup that's got a great idea for clean technology that no one really quite understands yet, so no bank will invest. And right now, walking home from a 14-hour shift is a single mother who is looking over a construction site and wondering how an Olympic stadium will change her life, how that matters to her. Because she lives in a crumbling tenement where the street lights don't work and her kids can't play in the streets. So buried deep within every community and organization, there are ideas, potentially transformational ones, that never see the light of day. So why is this? Because society is wired this way. So about over 2,000 years ago, the ancient Greeks were really good at engaging their populations to, to talk about what they would need in terms of sanitation, better amphitheaters, new roads, better restaurants. But about 2,000 years ago, that whole civilization just disappeared into the dust. And right from that point on 2,000 years ago, a new feudal system began with kings at the top and everybody else below. Over that 2,000 years, courts of the kings turned into administration of government. Over time, those administration of government turned into the ways that corporations run their businesses. And I was watching a really good speech by uh, Sagata Mitra on how to build a school in the, in the cloud. And he talked about the fact that certainly in, in India, that kids were educated simply to service that administration. And he called that the administrative engine of bureaucracy. Now, go watch that speech because it's really good. I could probably move on from that now. So my first job was working in a chicken factory. And I used to kill chickens every day. And I, w I was very good at killing chickens. But I knew I could improve the process. But it, could you look after my chicken? <laughs> Thank you. But my, I went to my man, line manager, we call them in the UK, and I said to him, we could change things. And he said, when I want your opinion, I will give it to you. <laughs> and you've probably come up against this sort of thing yourself, where you will go to somebody and say, maybe we can do this. And their first instinct, without even thinking, will be, yeah, but. And they'll say, oh, we're already doing something like that. Or we, we just can't afford to do it. Or maybe we'll do it next week. And the management won't do that because they're used to this cycle of the management being right and everybody else being wrong. But sometimes it's also about the fact that everybody's just too busy. Um, I don't know. I tried to find attribution for this, but I couldn't find who did it. But everybody's running so hard, they haven't got time to stand still and think about a new process or a new way of doing things. So how do we change that? Now, the way I've been doing it over the last three years is by working in crowdsourcing of ideas. And I was on the web about two weeks ago, and I found this illustration by a guy called Hugh McLeod. Now, he does great illustrations for large corporates to illustrate problems. And I thought this was spot on, firstly because of the name of this conference, but also it shows how crowdsourcing works very simply. All of these disparate people all around the different places holding really great key information in their brains. But if you connect them, you create knowledge. You create usable knowledge. Now, crowdsourcing, you can do it with great software tools. But equally, you can do it by sitting around a table and bringing everybody together. All crowdsourcing is of, 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 of ideas is taking the responsibility solely out of that core authority and bringing more people in to bring up their ideas, to talk about things, to brainstorm, to come up with new ways of doing things. And sometimes that might not get done, but crowdsourcing brings a way of bringing communities closer to do that. 
Now, crowdsourcing or idea crowdsourcing's fancy name is open innovation. And that's a, you'll hear that phrase a lot now. You'll also hear co-creation. You'll also hear ideation coming through. And I've, I've spent the last three years working with some interesting organizations to see how these things come through. Now, as Tal, Tal was talking earlier about the NHS and how it's difficult to put a new idea, his, his new heart system, for instance, anybody should listen to him, including a surgeon. And, and we've been working with NHS or, uh, trusts over the last few years because all they really want to do is find ways of making the money they're given go further to service patients and improve patient care. And there are so many different people who work in national health organizations and any health organization around the world, I'm sure you've got your own. But a piece of magic happened a couple of years ago where a porter, now these are the people who are almost invisible, was walking around the corridors and he was seeing patients with the gowns on. And the gowns in, in the UK, the patients' um, asses hang out. Now, Mashin taught me a phrase, dupa, ass. And this porter was allowed to go into an open innovation system, a collection where people got together to share ideas. And he said, maybe we could create a new gown to improve patients' dignity. And the magic was that a few years before, they'd be talking about it in different parts of this health authority. But it had been forgotten because everyone was so busy fighting the next fire, trying to uh, make the money go further, and hadn't stopped to think. Now, then, a designer called Ben Delisi and, and the Design Council got involved, and now a new gown is being created that rather than tying up at the back where people's dupas show, now they're wrapping around the side like a Japanese kimono, which is a great way of doing things. One simple thing that was done by people coming together who would not normally be listened to having a say. Then we got a phone call from the mayor of Rio's office, and they had major problems around the World Cup where there were riots because people in the streets, the citizens of Rio, felt disenfranchised. There was this great big World Cup going on that they couldn't even afford tickets to go to, football lovers. And then they were in their homes or watching on the TV, and it was a complete divide. So that created a tension, that tension uh, flowed over into civil unrest and riots. What they decided to do was create a way of crowdsourcing all of their citizens. So they set the first challenge. How can we uh, plan for the legacy of the Olympic Games? People came in, put lots of great ideas in, 23 ideas filtered through the system, and the mayor assessed 23 of them. Now, 20 they were already doing, but they'd never been communicated. The policies had never been communicated to the citizens. The other three great ideas that came through turned into really good infrastructure projects that will improve the life of the citizens of Rio beyond the Olympic Games. True legacy. Then we look at um, Innovate for Climate, World Wildlife Fund. Lots of great ideas come out where new green technology can be implemented, but nobody will fund it. So the World Wildlife Fund decided to set up a fund that would set up a crowdsourced community where people could put their ideas in, that whole community could come together and assess and evaluate their ideas, and then the best ones were filtered to the top. Over the last two years, they funded $2.5 million of grants into these new green startups, which is affecting the economy and the ecosystem. And finally, we're working with Hutchinson Communication what they wanted to do was transform the way that people use mobile phones. And they put a major advert out, and they put a hashtag, when stuff sucks, make it right. And they get, they've had loads of an influx using social media to get all these great ideas of how to improve mobile communications. And it's been phenomenal for them. So coming full circle, open innovation, a wonderful opportunity to affect change. So buried deep within organizations and communities, there are these great potential transformational ideas that never see the light of day. But, beha but perhaps with open innovation, we can ignite those ideas and let them shine. Thank you.